Um, Sébastien Bourdeau-Duc, I practiced your name. I will now explain us uh, what Migen or Migon, Migen is? Migen? Yep. Um, which also is a base of uh, the Milky Mist project. And next version of the Milky Mist. Next version, and I have to switch the beamer, actually, so we don't have a blue screen. And the light. Okay. That one this time. So, oh, MyGen. MyGen is really a toolbox. It's a collection of tools based on Python, which enable you to build uh, complex digital hardware. By complex digital hardware, I mean basically what the previous two talks were about, which means uh, digital design that you typically put in an ASIC or on, more commonly in an FPGA, which means that basically you are working with uh, uh, binary Boolean functions and registers. And uh, MyGen provides uh, all those tools that you see here. And I will briefly go through a couple of them. And I will start with the base of MyGen, which enables everything else to work, which is the FHDL layer. Which, so FHDL stands for Fragmented Hardware Description Language. And the very key idea of FHDL is to enable you to use Python as a meta language for hardware description uh, of uh, complicated designs. What is a meta language? Basically, a meta language is a language which enables you to uh, make statements about a language in another language. Well, that sounds very abstract still, but you can think, uh, you can think of it as a code generator, basically. Uh, if you have used Verilog or VHDL, uh, there is something called a generate statement. And what a generate statement is, it's basically, a, typically, it's a for loop. So variance, but usually it's a for loop. And this for loop will uh, repeat the statements. But instead of just having for loops and uh, other very basic constructs like that, uh, MyGen enables you, and FHDL enables you, to have the full power of Python to uh, generate code and generate hardware designs. So uh, there are some restrictions in, uh, in FHDL and also things that uh, FHDL cleans up. Uh, first, it's really made for uh, building synchronous circuits because typically uh, most logic designs today are uh, synchronous and FPGA architectures are meant to be used with synchronous designs. Synthesis tools are meant to be used with synchronous designs. You can do asynchronous designs, but you wouldn't get a big performance advantage out of, out of going asynchronous. Uh, so it's, it's, in, it's a good trade-off, and you're not reinventing wheels when you stay synchronous. So how it works internally. Typically, you would split your design into synchronous statements, which is typically what you put in an always at posage clock in Verilog or in VHDL process clock, begin if using edge clock. Uh, that's what you put. And that's what MyGen calls a synchronous statement. And combinatorial statement is typically what you do in uh, Verilog with always at uh, star, which means take all the inputs and put them into the sensitivity list. Or in VHDL, use the process and put all the inputs into the sensitivity list manually. And to express the statements that you put into those, uh, those statement lists, you are basically uh, putting Python objects together. So, of course, putting Python objects together will, can lead very well, very easily to a very ugly syntax. So there are lots of uh, syntax tricks, lots of hacks that I made into Python to make it look much nicer. So it reads like, uh, it reads almost like another language, but it's actually passed by the Python interpreter. That's what uh, Ruby people call internal domain-specific language. It's used quite a bit in Ruby programming for web applications and things. You can do it as well in Python and for hardware. So uh, how does it work? Well, the basic element is a signal. That's what you have in uh, Verilog, which you declare with wire or reg, or signal when you are using VHDL. And then it's the equivalent more or less of an electric wire inside a chip. And then you can combine uh, signals to form some expressions. So it's a, just a normal Boolean expression. And when you write that expression, then all the Python operators have been overloaded correctly so that it generates a nested Python object which represents this expression. And when you want to put that expression into, assign it to another signal, you use the equi method of that signal, and you put the expression as a parameter for that method, and that returns an assignment uh, object of Python 
which links the signal to its value. So after you have made all those uh, assignments and other statements, you can collect them into lists. And then at the end, you combine synchronous and combinatorial statement plus some goodies like memories or instantiating PSG or log modules, and that gives you what is called a fragment. And then you put all the fragments together and you have your complete design. And then you can convert it for synthesis or simulate it. So I will give you a concrete example to give you to explain you how it works. So that's what you would type in the Python interpreter. So first I import the MyGen libraries, then I create a counter signal which has 16 bits. I create an O signal, which has only one bit, so that's the default value. Uh, then I have one combinatorial statement, which means that uh, the value of the O signal is uh, one when counter is zero, and is zero otherwise when counter is non-zero. And then I have a synchronous statement, which gets executed at every clock cycle, which increments the counter. Then I create a fragment using this uh, combinatorial statement and this synchronous statement. And finally, I convert it to Verilog, and my gen automatically generates this source code. So you can see that it actually uh, uh, generates code which is uh, more or less human readable. Well, that's a simple example, so it's perfectly human readable. But when you have a big design, it also makes pretty nice signal names automatically, so you can actually dive into your design, and when you have bugs, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, it also adds some uh, other things automatically. For example, it has a reset signal which gets inserted automatically, so you never have to forget to reset a register, which is a very common and frustrating bug when you are dealing with uh, VHDL or Verilog directly. So that's what I was mentioning when it says it cleans up things with, uh, automatically with Verilog. It also cleans up uh, sign, sign arithmetic because if you have ever dealt with sign arithmetic in Verilog or VHDL, it's really a pain, and you can have uh, totally uh, obnoxious behavior, like you have minus one plus one equal minus 16, or totally aberrant things like that with very log sign arithmetic. And uh, MyGen automatically cleans those things automatically for you, so that integers behave like integers. That's something that uh, was already implemented in my HDL, and I basically did the same thing for MyGen as well. So uh, you can also simulate your design. So you can feed a fragment into a simulator, and then the advantage of that is that you can use the full power of Python to write your test bench, so you can use Python uh, function in any way you want. And there are some powerful Python features, such as generators, which enable you to create, uh, in combination with the MyGen libraries, pretty powerful test benches in a pretty easy way. For example, here I'm generating uh, 10 bus transactions, so I'm writing at the address x, which goes from 0 to 9, the value two, 2 times x. And after that, I print the latency of the write, and then I insert some random number of dead cycles on the bus. And so that's a Python generator. A Python generator is basically a function. It's a resumable function. It's a function which is an, capable of returning several values. And so I return a t-write object, which represents the write transaction multiple times. And between the returns, there is the rest of the function is executed. So it's, it's also a bit similar to a system call. There is also some crazy person who wrote a complete operating system using Python generators. Uh, and when you have this generator, you can, you can just put it into the initiator components from the MyGen library. If you want to generate wishbone transaction, you just call wishbone.initiator my generator, and it will wiggle the signal correctly in the simulation to implement all those transactions that you have programmed in your generator. Or if you don't want wishbone, if you want another bus, which is called ASME, it's a bus specific to Milky Mist, which is optimized for uh, high, high performance SDRAM, you can just use the other uh, initiator component from another MyGen library, and it just uh, uses the same generator semantics. And the nice thing about MyGen, it's, that's a new feature, is that you can actually uh, compile some of those generators into uh, finite state machines. So when you have a big FSM in the design, it's very painful to do it by hand, and it's much, much nicer to write it in Python. So MyGen provides a function called, uh, provides a library called Pytolate. It's, uh, the name comes from the, from, uh, how is it called, Power. The, the name comes from light, which means stone, and Python. So it's like when you turn a Python into stone. Uh, and 
using PySolite, you can actually convert automatically those generators into a finite state machine. So here I have a very simple example which uh, generates write transactions at address 0 to 10 and write 0. That's not very useful, but just an example. And you can end this subset of Python plus many other features. You can have for loops, while loops, you can have many other features. Uh, can be compiled automatically to, fi to a finite state machine. You just have to call the function make PySolite, you pass it to your generator, and then uh, you pass it a bus interface that you have created previously, and it will automatically create the if HDL containing a state machine which does those transactions on your bus. So that's a pretty powerful feature. There is currently one industrial application right now. It's for controlling the analog RF chain of a radar. So there is... Uh, this is working on the radar. We have uh, a couple of uh, analog components which get controlled by a serial bus. And we want to control them very fast because we need to change dynamically a lot of parameters in the radio system of the radar. And uh, for doing that, the microcontroller is a bit too slow because we want the parameters to change really fast. And uh, if we do it in, a, in very log of VHDL, we have to deal with very big state machine, which it's a bit painful and to do it manually, so we can just write the control code in Python and we put that into PySolite and it generates this big state machine which does the radar RF control automatically. So, uh, as you probably know, a lot of people in the FPGA or ISIC industry like to reuse code and a lot of people fear that they cannot reuse code when they're using MyGen, but that's not true actually. Uh, you can just instantiate any VHDL or Verilog module from your MyGen code, or you can also instantiate your MyGen code from another uh, VHDL or Verilog module. There are lots of tools for that. And there is even someone who is developing uh, what is called the MyGen embedded mode. It would work a bit like PHP, so you would write most of your design in VHDL, and then you would insert some uh, uh, special characters which let you embed some Python auto generated statements inside the body of your code, which is written in... Uh, PHDL or Verilog. So if you want just to try a little bit MyGen, you can use the embedded mode or just write a little module and put it into a larger design if you just want you know, to test the temperature. So MyGen also has a lot of libraries to support uh, bus interfaces. So we support all those buses, there are libraries inside. Uh, there are a couple of... Uh, components to deal with those buses which come in the library. I mentioned the initiators before, but there are also interconnect components, for example, which I show here. So this component uh, connects bus masters. So there are two buses here. So that's typically the instruction and data buses of a CPU. And I connect them to all those slaves. And when I said that uh, uh, Python was a pretty powerful meta language, that this is illustrated here, because I can use uh, functional programming to define the address decoders of the bus. So this uh, Python component can be parameterized by Python functions. So you can have a very clean code when you want to define your addresses and you have a lot of flexibility, you just have to write a Python function. You put that into, into interconnect component and you can decode your address in any way you like. Uh, there are a couple of other components to, inside the bus library. Uh, this is for generating a configuration and status register banks, uh, as, as well as interrupt controllers. That's typically how you would uh, write the CPU and CSR interface for UART, which is basically a serial transmitter. Uh, you would define the TX, RX register, the divisor to set the baud rate of your transmitter. And then you define abstract event sources. And you put that into the MyGen CSR generator. And now all you have to do is you have a signal to to write your received character on. You have a signal to grab your, the character that you need to transmit from. And then you have two signals that you just have to wiggle when you are busy or when you are done receiving or transmitting a character. And then MyGen will just take care of the rest, mapping your CSR into the address space of the CPU, uh, connecting the interrupt lines, uh, generating interrupt mask registers, interrupt pending registers. All this is just automated with the MyGen library for you. So, Another big part of, uh, of MyGen is uh, SDRAM and ASME support. ASME stands for Advanced System Memory Infrastructure. Uh, a lot of, uh, most, well, basically all uh, open source FPGA designs have big, big problems with SDRAM. Uh, that's why 
most projects use SRAM, like Yann Gizor's Yazep, for example. And uh, we, we want to provide libraries in MyGen to make that much easier and uh, very high performance, basically. Uh, to be, well, I think ASME is actually faster than SRAM because we can run the GR3 at uh, very high speeds. ASME is really meant for very high performance uh, DRAM access. DRAM has a lot of problems. It's pretty complicated to, to deal with. There are a lot of uh, physical uh, access problems, signal integrity, timing. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, control logic issues. If you want to make it fast, you have a lot of work to do uh, on the on the common scheduling. Well, I won't go into the details because that would take one hour lecture. Durham is really a complicated topic. But there are tons and tons of uh, optimizations that are available in Migen to make Durham fast. Uh, basically, this uh, thing even enables you to run DRAM at a multiple of the system clock frequency and push several DRAM commands in parallel. That's one of the keys, key ideas of uh, those DRAM controllers we are dealing with. And uh, there's also support for out-of-order uh, completion of DRAM transactions, which uh, enables the system to minimize the dead times when you're dealing with uh, SDRAM. Basically, the performance of SDRAM depends on the order at which you order at which you issue the transactions. So you just put all your uh, transaction in advance, and this uh, the memory controller would put them in um, an optimized order to make the DRAM to try to make the DRAM faster. So there are uh, generic components and bus support in MyGen. Uh, memory controller and Phi are not included in MyGen themselves, but I have a reference design which works on the Milky Mist boards. Uh, it actually works. I didn't, I've done some testing on it. I wouldn't say it's 100% tested. There might still some, be some bugs lurking, but you can actually boot Linux on that system running ASME. You can have a frame buffer. Uh, you can run, well, there are some tests. I wouldn't say it's robust. I wouldn't say it's 100% proved, but I would say it's 99.9% correct, at least. Oh, and if you were, uh, if you were scared about the out of order uh, aspect of ASME. Uh, MyGen actually provides you with all the reorder buffers that you need. You just, you have to connect to your bus and then uh, you can have an interface which looks like an in-order bus to your other course. So it's, we're re re trying to make that look very simple. And when you are working with the next thing, which is data flow, if you put all your address into the component, yeah, you don't have any problems with uh, memory latency anymore. So data flow, that's the last component of my journey. Uh, data flow is basically a method of programming which enables you to represent your algorithms or system as a graph, that is basically a network of functional units. Uh, how many of you have used LabVIEW here? LabVIEW, no one knows LabVIEW? Ah, one person, two, three? Well, basically in LabVIEW you are just basically connecting uh, blocks together, I mean, it's like uh, when you are working on analog audio synthesizer or, or you know, connecting wires together to uh, make signals go from one block to the next. And or, uh, that's also, there's also a program called Pure Data. It's pretty popular with artists, but it's basically the same idea. You, are, you have blocks like uh, oscillators or uh, audio outputs, and you connect them together to create a system or which makes funny things. And that's basically data flow. That's basically the main idea of data flow. Uh, the main two important ideas about data flow is that it's parallelizable. The different units can run in parallel as soon as they have data available. And it's quite intuitive. You're connecting blocks together. That's something that people can more easily grasp than code usually. So imagine, so imagine provides some uh, infrastructure for doing this kind of things. You can actually, you have uh, object, well, Python is an object-oriented programming language, so Magen provides abstract classes that you can derive from to create your actors. It provides uh, infrastructure to connect the actors together, and there are some, uh, there, is some actor there is an actor library. I mentioned SDRAM before. If you want to do a DMA using that uh, SDRAM system, for example, you have an actor which takes addresses in and gets, and pulls and gets data out, and it does all the connection to the SDRAM bus, reordering of transactions, everything for you. You put, on, you, get, you put addresses in order and you get data out in order as well. And the nice thing is if you put, you don't have to wait for the data to come out uh, before you put the next address. 
So you can, read, you can have a pretty high performance system when you do this kind of things. Basically, your data, your data will be always in flight uh, between your uh, data flow network and the SDRAM controller. So that's uh, also an illustration of the tool, other tools that MyGen provides you with for doing data flow programming. You can draw your actor graph. Right now we are using NetworkX, but we are probably going to move to another graph library because it's not extremely good. And uh, that's a result from a, from a data flow simulation, which can show you uh, some, uh, which can compute some performance numbers automatically. So how it works, basically you have this actor which is pushing data for all those actors and ending up at this actor here. And uh, you can run a simulation of that and get some performance number for the communication on every edge. So when you have some performance problem, you can uh, tell which actor is slowing down the system, where there are bottlenecks in your system. You can see it by reading at those numbers. And when I said that uh, NetworkX was not a particularly good library for doing that, it's because you actually have to analyze the numbers and look at the numbers instead of having color bars or very visual uh, indications uh, to show you where the problem is in your system. So it's pretty much work in progress right now, but uh, uh, the biggest application of data flow today that we have is a complete uh, video frame buffer using, written using this, uh, this uh, data flow system. Uh, basically, you have uh, an address generator and a video timing generator, which uh, create uh, synchronization signals for a video monitor plus SDROM access for the content of the frame buffer, which gets pulled into this uh, actor which reads data from memory, plus some FIFO which gets in, in the end into the video uh, digital to analog converter to generate a VGA signal automatically for, uh, for, from, the, from the frame buffer stored in DRAM. You can do it pretty easily. I think the whole code for this frame buffer, including CSR interface and everything, is something like 300 lines of code. That's a big improvement compared to what you would need in Verilog. So, yeah, that's about it uh, for this little overview of MyGen. As I say, it's a collection of different tools. That's why I kept switching topics. So, if you want to uh, use MyGen, it's open source. It has pretty permissive less license, it's GPLv3, but you have the permission to instantiate proprietary components into a MyGen design or instantiate a MyGen design into a proprietary uh, Verilog source. Uh, all the source you find on GitHub, we have a mailing list and we have an IRC channel if you want to discuss that, or you can just simply ask me your questions now. So do we have questions? I can't believe that, not a single one. Okay. And thank you for your talk. No questions? <coughs> so I, see I will try to bring a demonstration board tomorrow if you want to play. So in five minutes we will then continue uh, with the evolution of mobile OS interfaces. And I hope the speaker is here. Oh, and by the way, there is, uh, I think there is, we can, you can, if you want to see Yazep in, uh, you're going to the workshop room right now, aren't you? Are you going to the workshop room to demonstrate uh, Yazep? Uh, just people come and ask you. So is there somebody interested in seeing Yazep from the last talk in action? One, two, three, four. Five? So I think you... No, in the workshop area. Workshop with your, in the workshop area with your laptop. <laughs> 